What's up, Closer Nation? I'm back in front of the whiteboard again with this week's demonstration. We're gonna talk about how to go from poor me to more me. You see, there's this thing about having a quote unquote victim mentality. And look, I, I might piss some of you off as you watch this video, and I'm used to that at this point, but I've gotta say the things that others won't so that maybe I can compel you to do the things that others don't. And here's the thing about a victim's mentality is a lot of us grew up as victims. We were victims of abuse. We were victims of the, of the system, right? We we're victims of the man, the man, totally man. We saw victims of the man. Like we, were, we grow up with this like victim mentality, right? It's like, okay, you were taken advantage of or they ripped you off. But the truth is like that victim mentality will not serve you. And what happens with that victim mentality is oftentimes when you think you're a victim, you go looking for a hero. Right, when you're a victim, matter of fact, there's three things that come into play. There's the victim, the villain, and the hero. There's three roles that we're all playing at different times, right? And if you play the victim, you have to rely on some sort of hero to rescue you, and there's been some sort of villain that's done you wrong. And listen, the, the wrong thinking with this victim mentality is it gives you a poor mentality, a poor me mentality. You think, oh, these things always happen to me. Or, you know, the victims, oftentimes they want to fight back, it only makes the situation even worse, right? But I'm going to teach you how to go from that victim mentality, that poor me, I'm such a victim, these things happen to me all the time, I just can't get ahead to go from that poor me thinking to this more me, so like where can I get increase? You see, because in every situation there's a lesson, right? There's an, a lesson and an ability for you to grow from the experience of that lesson. Oftentimes people have lessons, the victim mentality kicks in, what we've talked about in previous videos called the vault in the back of your head, that victim mentality kicks in and it tells you instead of sharing a lesson, it says, oh, you've been hurt again. The lesson is that negative things always happen to you because you're a victim and we begin to put ourselves down. But what's really happening is you're be giving a test in life and you have the opportunity to pass that test but instead of being the hero that passes that test, most people choose to be the victim that falls, uh, the person that falls victim to the test and deem the test, the, the, uh, the uh, what is it, the bad guy, right? Victim, the, the villain, damn, I was losing my words there for a second. So uh, but yeah, that's how you know we just do these in one take. We don't ever re-record them, man. We're just like, hey, what happens, what happens, right? You get a good eight, 10 minutes of it, and we're doing it in one take. Just one take, damn it! All right, it's back at it. So we, we make the test the victim. So these things that happen to us, this test is not there to make you a victim. The test is there to make you better. The test is there to see if you can stand the increase. But oftentimes if we play that victim mentality, what happens to us is we start looking for that hero and we start deeming that test the victim instead of that test the victor that can help us take our life to the next level. Can I get an amen for all the people in the South down there? So what I'm gonna to talk to you today about is going from that victim mentality, that poor me mentality, to using that test, and instead of making that test the victim, or the villain rather, making that test the hero that teaches you the lesson, that pulls you out of the situation that you were being tested in in the first place. And there's four key areas of your life that you've gotta focus on growth in. And so if you're gonna go from poor me to more me, there's four key areas where you need to look for more in from every single situation so that you can see how you can grow. But first, before I get into these four sections, let me tell you a little bit about a story. So a few weeks ago, I had a, uh, a situation where an employee and a client got into a little tassel over some whose intellectual property was what? The employee was completely acting rogue, but the actual uh, customer that got into it with the employee, and it was this whole exchange. It could have been a fucking nightmare, right? I could have been a victim. It's like, poor me. Why does this shit always happen to me? I work hard to make a sale. I get somebody in here, and the next thing you know, I've got all these problems, this stuff. I could have taken that poor me mentality, but I said, where can I find a way to make this situation that's a lesson into a blessing? And so I started looking and I thought of ways that I could say, okay, where can I get more? Where can I learn from this and where can I use it to make me better? Well, I turned around and instead of getting mad at the employee, instead of getting mad at the client for starting shit with the employee, I made a pact and I made things work out, which made it exponentially better for all three parties involved than it was in the first place anyway. Now I'll spare you the details of getting in there just to keep people's stuff confidential. But in the past, what I would have done is I would have struck out. I would have went, oh, I'm a victim. I want to fight back. And I would have fought back against the employee, maybe tongue lashed him or whatever. You know, it's like, you my, all that kind of stuff. Same thing with the client. Take your money back. Kick back the rocks. I don't need you. Like, but I look and say, hey, instead of having this victim mentality, instead of going, oh, poor me, here we go with this shit. 
I said, hey, so how can I make this more? How can I increase the client's life? How can I increase the employee's life to where this doesn't want to show up for that person again? And how can I increase both of their lives so that in turn increases me? And I realized that I have to look for these opportunities and these lessons that normally piss you off as a victim and make you want to fight back. You have to make that test your hero and then look for one of four areas for growth with every lesson that comes. And the first area of growth is in your faith. Now, I'm not a religious person. I don't go to church on Sunday. I don't worship God. I, uh, I'm not a Christian or a Muslim or Jewish or whatever else is out there. I'm none of that, right? I'm just uh, basically like agnostic. But I believe there's a universe out there and there's some kind of key programming DNA code that's generated all this stuff. And I believe that we're all tied into it somehow. So I have faith in the system. You, you follow me? I have faith in the system. So I look, it's like, hey, and the system may be inside my head. I may have, you know, have to have faith and courage and confidence within myself. But I look for this faith. Like, and if for you, it might be, how could you use this lesson to increase your faith? Right? Some of you in the Christian Bible says lean not to your own understanding, right? So how can I use this as an increase of my faith? Because whether you're religious or not or whatever God that you pray to, there is some sort of universal laws that were placed on this planet that we abide by by some governing body. And we've got to have faith that that governing body is for us and not against us in order for us to prosper and get to the next level. So first I start thinking about how could this increase my faith and not faith from a standpoint of how can I tithe more to the church or how can I go spend more time at the neighborhood outreach, you know, you know that's fine if you do that, that's not my take on it. My take is how can I increase my faith in the system for personal gain so that it's more me, let's just be real. The second thing is your finances. Now I learned these four Fs from my good friend Kevin Nation. So Kevin, if you're watching this video, which you might, you cool like that, we'll let you watch our stuff from time to time. So Kevin, if you're watching this video, I didn't steal this from you, I simply borrowed it. You can have it back after this video. Thank you for sharing this lesson with me though, my friend. And so with finances, it's the second F. So you've got faith, you've got to increase your faith. So how can you go from a victim, that this always happens to me, to where I believe in the system that it'll never happen to me, right? You increase your faith. The second thing is your finances. Right? A system that, in the situation I just told you, normally I would have just said, take your money back and kick rocks because that's the victim mentality that I've had in the past. And I've known to do that from time to time. I'm not perfect. Right? Well, at the same time, I thought, how can I keep this money? How can I keep this client? And how can I keep the employee happy to where we can all operate in some euphoristic, Ethi what is it, e Ethiopian? No, utopian, right? Not Ethiopian. I think that's a real thing. And I think utopian doesn't exist anywhere, right? And so that we can all exist in this utopian society together. And so instead of losing finances, I thought, well, how can I gain this? And actually what I did was I set up a, a certain affiliate agreement with the person that we have problems with to actually increase the money uh, that we were going to, that I would have initially lost because of the marketing and everything else that we paid just to get a customer anyway. And now I've got a deal going with a customer where we're actually making money on top of that. And that's because I made the shift again from poor me to more me. The next F is your fitness. That's the dude's rib. That's a six pack right there. That's how you know that I don't know shit about a six pack because I can't even draw one of them motherfuckers, right? So uh, I ain't had one of those for a long time. But I do work out. I was at CrossFit this morning. I was at Orange Theory yesterday. I have ADD, so I'm like all over the place when it comes to gyms. I'll be at LA Fitness tomorrow. And the thing is with me is, and with anybody, you have to think, how can I use this to increase my fitness? Now, I say that life is a, a lifelong strength conditioning. Everything that's given to you, every test, everything that comes against you, every sickness, every time that you've gotten hurt, broken arm, pulled a muscle, hurt yourself, got fat, got skinny, those are lifelong tests of strength conditioning to see how much wear and tear and adaptment and adjustment that you can actually weather in this thing that we call life. And if you're not physically fit, what happens is your mind becomes unfit too. Because think about it, when you're not actually physically doing something, whether it be CrossFit, whether it be the gym, whether it just be simply running, biking, hiking, all those things that they tell you can do in tampon commercials, those, like if that's what you're doing, like you've got to be able to make sure that you're focused on your fitness because here's what happens. Most of us and most of you watching this video are very anxious by nature, right? We like, we, we're hyped up, we got Red Bull running through our system, some of y'all got cocaine still left over from Saturday and it's Wednesday. Like y'all got all these things running through your system, you're amped up and everything else. 
If you don't exercise the demon, it'll find a way to come out. If you don't get that stress out with physical exercise, then what happens is it ends up storing the stress. Stress converts to fat. Fat does you no good, and it starts this complete shame cycle that a lot of people can't get out of. You see guys sometimes that are 40 years old and gals that are 40 years old that are losing their hair, that are way overweight, and they just sit all day because they do. To walk up a flight of stairs is exhausting to them all of a sudden because they've let their fitness get out of whack. So you think, how does a life lesson affect my fitness? Well, you're always looking for areas to grow, right? This morning I was in CrossFit. I realized after I ran the freaking second mile they had us run that my knees were killing me. And the, and the voice in the back of my head was saying, Ryan, you need to stop running. Just walk. It's okay. You've worked this far. And remember, we said this in the previous video, everything's trying to keep you average on this planet. So I'm trying to overcome that voice, the vault in the back of my head. And that lesson was that now I'm going to be able to make those two miles quicker because I've put it underneath me. I've got some understanding and a foundation where I can go and time myself to be even faster next time. But the, the reason why I share that with you is if I'm not willing to push in my fitness and get outside of my comfort zone in my fitness, how the hell am I going to push and get outside of my comfort zone in any other area of my life, business, family, finances, my faith? How am I going to step out if I can't step out of my fitness? So when you have a lesson, you think, hey, okay, so here's this lesson that's happened to me. Had I been physically fit, maybe I wouldn't have spouted off to that person. Had I exercised my demon this morning, maybe I wouldn't have yelled at my wife. Had I, had I physically, uh, had I been better physically fit, I wouldn't be ashamed of myself to where I take some of my shortcomings out on other people. These are things that some of you watching this know happen on a regular basis, some shit you really need to consider. And then the last F is family. How can this lesson increase my relationship with my family, increase my bond with my family? So some of you are like me. I was adopted by a stepfather at age seven, and I don't have a relationship really with anybody in my family these days. It's just me and my three little kiddos. This is us. This is my family. Little baby, little baby Colton, Asher, Jax, Amy, and me. This is a picture of us. Looks just like me, right? It's killer artistic skills. And so, but when I have lessons in life, it's like, how can I use this lesson to increase the bond in the family? How can I take this lesson, this experience, and share this and come and, and have this lesson better with my family? One time, I was in the mountains in Utah, and I was on a divine spiritual journey. I think we've talked about this before in one of these videos. And one of the lessons that I learned was like, use this experience to increase the relationship that you have with your significant other. And I have, ever since I've come back, I use that lesson to strengthen the bond between Amy and I, to, to make us to where our relationship's that much stronger. And every time that we've gone in an argument, a fight, because we're not perfect, every time that we've had our scuffs, our arguments and our fights and stuff like that, we both take a minute, we stop at how to go from that poor me, Amy won't listen to me, or that poor Ryan, he beats me. I'm just kidding, I would never do that, I'm just being funny. But, like that poor Ryan, he's this, that, the other. And so instead of having that, we think, how can we put this together and make it more of the two of us? You see what I'm saying? How can we use this lesson, this argument, this agree disagreement that would normally take less of us and break us apart? How can we use that to strengthen our bond and to go from that poor me mentality to that more me mentality? So I'm going to finish with this. There's four F's, thanks to our friend Kevin Nations, that you've got to cover in your life and you've got to be thinking about every time that you've been a victim and that test has shown up and you try to portray it as a villain, flip it to portray it as a hero and think how can you grow in these four areas with your faith, your finances, your fitness, and your family. If you enjoyed this, if you learned something from it, make sure you share it on social media. Come back here to YouTube or at hardcorecloser.com. Every week we do one of these videos. And if you're not a member of the Break Free Academy Entourage, what are you doing, man? Join us back there. You're gonna love it. It's the best mastermind on the planet. We got people doing all sorts of businesses, networking and making money together. It's a beautiful little beehive that we got going on back there. Later.